The carbohydrate part of our diet consists of starch, lactose and sucrose of which lactose and sucrose are simple disaccharides and can be easily digested. Starch however is a big complex molecule and needs a lot more attention. That's why starch digestion begins as soon as you put it in your mouth. Salivary amylase acts on starch and breaks it down into maltose. However, it is capable only of converting about 30% of all the starch into maltose. This is because salivary amylase acts on starch only for as long as the food travels from the mouth through the esophagus. Because salivary amylase has a pH optimum of about 6.7 to 7 and it is completely inactive below pH of 4. So as soon as food enters the stomach which has a pH of about 2, the salivary amylase gets completely inactivated. Then there is almost no carbohydrate digestion in stomach which again begins as soon as the food enters the duodenum. When the food enters the duodenum, pancreatic amylase starts acting on starch and converts it completely into maltose. After this we have three disaccharides to deal with, maltose, sucrose and lactose. Disaccharidases in the intestinal juice help to break these down. Maltase breaks down maltose into two glucose molecules, sucrase breaks down sucrose into glucose and fructose, lactase breaks down lactose into glucose and galactose. So after this we are left with three simple monomers or three simple molecules glucose, galactose and fructose. Our bodies have evolved very interesting mechanisms for absorption of various nutrients. For carbs we have sodium potassium ATPase pump which pushes out three sodium ions and brings in two potassium. This creates an electrochemical gradient for sodium to move from the lumen into the enterocyte. However, we don't have any simple sodium transporters which can transport sodium into the cell. We have co-transporters which transport one ion of sodium along with one monosaccharide. So when the sodium tries to get into the cell, it brings along with a molecule of glucose or galactose. Fructose on the other hand enters via facilitated diffusion. After all this the concentration of these three rises inside the cell and so they want to exit. So on the basal surface we have transporters which allow for facilitated diffusion of these three glucose, galactose and fructose out of the cell into the interstitium from where they can be freely taken up by the blood capillaries and transported to various destinations.